48, a current of 2.345 amps passes through the cell shown in figure 17.19 for 45 minutes. What is the volume of the hydrogen collected at room temperature if the pressure is exactly 1 atm? Hint, is hydrogen the only gas present above the water? Okay, so in this case, let's break it down, right? They have a lot of information here. We just have to basically compile it all and find a formula. That's the start of this question. Now they do say that, you know, there's a figure 17.19 here, but we don't really need that in order to answer the question. Now, in this case, we have a current of 2.345 amps. And remember, when we're talking about chemistry formulas, current is always an I value. So I have an I value of 2.345 amps, that's the current, and they're telling me that we have some sort of time here. We have 45 minutes, so I have a T value, 45 minutes. What is the volume of the hydrogen? So we're looking for a volume, so maybe I'll just say that that's a question mark. At room temperature, so remember, room temp is always 298.15 Kelvin. We could also say that this is the same thing at 25 degrees Celsius. So generally, most formulas in chemistry want you to use Kelvin. So I'm just going to say that this is 298.15 Kelvin. And we have a pressure here. Okay, 1 atm. So I have a list of variables here. Now, in essence, we want to find out the volume. Now, if we think of back to other chapters, we have a volume, or we're trying to solve for the volume, we have a temperature, and we have a pressure. We have only one of each, right? And remember the formula that we use when we have one volume, one temperature, and pressure. That's the ideal gas equation, which is this one right here, right? PV equals nRT. Now, we have a pressure, the volume is what we want to solve for, right? The R is a constant number, so we have that. We have the temperature, seems like we have basically everything, this is the question mark, but the, the thing that's holding us back is that we need to find out the moles. So in order to use this formula, we have to find the moles, which is the N value. So now I say to myself, okay, what other information do they use so that maybe I can find the moles? That's where the I and the T values come from. So now I start saying to myself, okay, what formula relates a current with the time and the number of moles? And that's this formula right here. Now it's the formula that relates the number of moles of electrons with the time, the current, and Faraday's constant. So let's see what we got. Well, we have an I value, we have a current, that's the 2.345 amps. Remember, Faraday's constant is always a constant value. It's 96,485. If you wanna know the units for Faraday's constant, it's always coulombs per mole. And we actually have a time value as well. Right? That's the 45 minutes. But the thing is, is that when you're using this formula, I have to have my time in seconds. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to convert that minutes into seconds. But minutes into seconds, that's a pretty easy formula, right? All we got to do is just times by 60. So 45 times by 60, and I get 2700 seconds. So instead of saying 45 minutes, I'm gonna say that I have 2,700 seconds. Oh no, oh no, what happened? Magic. <laughs> 2,700 seconds, okay. So now we can solve for the N value. So N equals, let's maybe put this here, right? We have the two values up top and then divided by Faraday's constant. Maybe I'll just make this a little prettier. Let's do the red values first. We have 
three, four, five, divided by the 96,485, and then our time was 2,700 seconds. So let's find out the number of moles. N equals that value, I'm just going to grab it, times by 2.345, and that looks good to me, divided by 96,485, everything looks good, press enter, and this is 0 0.0. 0.0656215992. Now notice how I don't round because that's not the final answer. So I try not to round unless I'm at the final, final answer, when I'm at my volume. Now just know that when you're using this formula, it's not enough to just say that this is moles. This is specifically moles of electrons that are being used. But the thing here, or the question is, what do you guys think? Can I just take this number and plug it in to this end value and call it a day? I wish. The thing here is that if we're using the n equals it divided by f, you're always going to get the moles of electrons. This is your moles of basically your atom or your ion. So moles of ion. So I can't just say that I have this amount of electrons. I need to find out now what the element we're talking about here. And the element that we're talking about is hydrogen, right? So I have to somehow find a, um, I have to somehow find a balanced equation that links hydrogen to its electrons. So in, in general, right, if we're talking about water, water is broken down into, so I'll just say it over here, right, water is broken down into its two components of H plus and OH minus, hydronium and hydroxide. Since we only care about the hydrogen, I'm going to start my equation with H plus. And you always try to bring it back to just the hydrogen without a charge. But then you say to yourself, uh, is this a diatomic in standard state? Yes, it is. So I have to put a two here. And since now I have two hydrogens on my product side, I have to put two hydrogens on my reactant side. And now let's see where those electrons are. Generally, right, or always, you always put the electrons on the more positive side. So in this case, I have a plus two charge. And on this side, I don't see a charge, so I have a zero charge. I'm going to put electrons on the left side to bring it down to the right side, and I have to add two electrons, because two E negatives, two negatives plus two positives, will get zero. Okay, so now I have my nice little balanced equation, and I'm going to use my stoichiometry to just see how many hydrogens are in the moles of electrons. Now, since they specifically said hydrogen, right, we're only talking about the H2. If we wanted to start off by saying that we had hydronium, they would have said hydronium, or they would have said H+. But in this case, we need to go back to just the regular hydrogen, which is the diatomic. So I'm starting off with the amount that I have for my electrons, and I'm going to how many moles of H2. So if I just do a quick, um, if I just do a quick stoichiometry ratio, 0 0.0656215992, that's the moles of electrons, and I don't want that anymore, so that's times by the ratio. I throw my moles of electrons on the bottom, and now I just want moles of the H2, right? So in this case, technically, we're not really finding the moles of an ion. I'll specifically say that since they said hydrogen, we're finding it out for H2. And in the balanced equation, I have two moles of electrons for every one mole of H2. So one goes on the top and two goes on the bottom. Moles of electrons cancel out. All I have to do is take this value, grab it, that's why I love the TI-84, and divide it by 2. And that's now the new moles of H2. So I have 0 
I mean, that's good enough, right? Technically, we shouldn't round, but what can you do, right? So that's now the moles of H2, and that's my new N value. So just pause the video, and maybe I'll just say N equals. So just pause the video if you need to, but I'm going to erase some of the things that we don't need. Um, the only thing that we need basically is this value. I'm going to get rid of all of this N equals T uh, plus I times I over F because we're done with that. And I'm just getting ready to get to my next part, which is PV equals NRT. So that's good. I will get rid of this because we don't need that anymore. And maybe I'll just keep this just to show you guys, but I'll get rid of the H2O. Okay. Whoop. There we go. So now PV equals NRT. Let's just bring this over here, right? So just like before, we now have the pressure, which is one ATM, the volume, which is what we're trying to solve for, which is X. The N value is now the 0 0.032810 and maybe I'll just, you know, I'll put the 0.1810796, that's the moles of specifically the H2. R value is a constant gas, constant value, 0 0.08206. Remember that guy? So this is in ATM times liter divided by mole times Kelvin. And the temperature value is the room temp, it's got to be in Kelvin, so 298.15 Kelvin. Now, we just have to make sure that basically all the units are in, you know, are agreeing with each other. Now, we want to find out the volume of the hydrogen, that's V. We have the moles of the hydrogen, that's N. So if we're trying to find for hydrogen, we have the moles of hydrogen, Technically, what should the pressure be? Should it be the total pressure? No, it should be just the pressure of hydrogen, H2. But the thing is, is that they said that collectively, it was exactly one ATM. This is the total pressure. That's why they give us the little hint, because we're talking about water, so I have to incorporate the vapor pressure of water. So I went to the back of the textbook and I found out that at 25 degrees Celsius at room temperature, you have 23.8 torr just designated to H2O. And because of that, the remaining one ATM goes to the hydrogen. So what I'm gonna do is I just have to quickly convert what this pressure is in ATM. So times by ratio, Tor goes on the bottom, ATM goes up on top. What are the values between ATM? One ATM always equals 760 Tor. Probably you have to memorize that conversion. Tor cancels out and now we have 23.8 divided by 760. And this amount of pressure is just designated towards the water. 0 0.03131578895 ATM to just the H2O gas. So if I want to find out what the actual pressure is of the H2, I'm going to take my total and minus it from the H2O. So I say 1 minus this value. And that's now the number that I get from the H2. So 0 0.96868, you kind of get the hint, right? We'll say ATM of H2. I try to pull as many decimals as I can because I still don't want to round. Now let's do it. So P, V equals N. R, T. So P was 0 0.96868. And maybe I'll just bring this a little bit this way. 
we're solving for V, so I'll just label that as X. N was the number of moles of H2, so we have that value, 0 0.0328107996. R is that constant value, 0 0.08206, and the temp is the 298.15. If we want to solve for X, all we have to do is just divide by that pressure. So I'm going to divide on both sides by 0 0.96868. 0 0.96868. Get rid of the pressure. And I could just do this quick calculation and find out the answer. I'm just going to get rid of this. Goodbye. And let's see. X equals, which is the volume, right? So it's the this number, if I just grab the whole number of moles, that's this one, times 0 0.08206 times 298.15, and then I'm going to divide by the pressure, and the pressure was the 0.9, so this number, if we wanted to get the whole value, so there you go. That's why I love the TI-84, because I could just pick the, the big numbers without rounding, and it's a much more accurate answer. And I press Enter, 0 0.828, seven zero six eight and that's liters but now there's one extra thing that this question is assuming since we're talking about water and remember we did the water breakdown of hydronium and hydroxide is hydrogen the only gas present above the water no it was part h and part o and in terms of that just know that between those, hydrogen is 95% efficient in this electrolysis. So this was one of the values that this question assumed that you're you know, going to know because hydrogen is not the only gas that's present above the water. So I'm just going to take this and times it by 0 0.95 because I just have to convert this, this uh, percent into a decimal, I just move it over to the left um, two times. And then if I pull this out, now we will be able to get the final answer. So I'm going to take this value, oop, where is that, this value, and times it by 0.95. And rounding seems like I have now two sig figs as my lowest number of sig figs, so this would be 0.79 liters and that is the final answer the volume of the hydrogen and there you go what a question hopefully this helped you out let me know in the comments subscribe to the channel and thank you so much for viewing the video if this helped you please hit that subscribe button i really um, appreciate all of you guys that come and watch the, the videos and let's just keep learning i'll talk to you soon Bye bye